Hello, Power Rangers fans, and welcome back to Rangers of the Universe. I'm Chris, and it is the 19th. It is finally here. Power Rangers, once and always, is now on Netflix worldwide. Now, if you haven't went and watched it, be sure to do that. I really liked it personally. I thought they did an excellent job for the special. You know, I think they did well with what they had, with what they were working with. You know, I mean, there were a lot of different cases with Austin St. John due to legal reasons and JDF before his passing, he turned it down as well as Amy Jo Johnson. So I think they did very well doing what they had to work with. You know, they couldn't get all of them back and that's, that didn't really feel like an issue to me. I mean, it did have a good scapegoat that they, they did with it. Like, it would have been awesome to see Amy and JDF. But, I mean, it makes sense. I mean, they have their reasons to turn it, turn it down. I mean, it's hard to go away to New Zealand all that much when you've got a life outside of it. And it's just fantastic that they could get who they could. And we did have that many return. Now, if you haven't seen it yet, be sure to go check it out and then come check out this review video and give it a watch because spoilers ahead, I will be going very in depth with what I thought about it. Now, I think there, I definitely would like to see more reunion specials in the future. I really would because of how much I enjoy that. And I'll get into that more on the end and say my reasoning with it. Now, Right at the opening of it, we open up to David Yoss, Billy Cranston, morphing and facing Robo Rita and the putties. And the rest of the Rangers come to join him, meaning Zach, and then morphed Trini, Kimberly, Jason, and Tommy. Obviously, there was no one morphing with any of them. And we do have the death of Trini Kwan. She does, we do see her killed, and I mean, it was, I really, I didn't expect when we got the trailer, I didn't expect there to be a scene of Trini dying. I thought, I figured that it automatically be a thing where, like, she'd have already been dead, but, I mean, them doing that was very shocking, but I think it was handled in a well way that they did it is, like, you know, I mean, she was a Power Ranger, she was a hero. And having her off screen being like a normal thing, I definitely think it was cool to have her sacrificing herself for somebody she loved, Billy. And I thought it was, it was a way to wrap up that character history in a tribute to Thy Train. So I do think that was very well done. And I did think that was awesome to put in it and include. So we had her death, which Rita's power, I mean, it absolutely decimated her. I think the CGI and graph, I think the graphics in that were actually very nicely done. I think that was, uh, it was extremely sad looking. I mean, it was, it was something that did bring tears because, I mean, they're not just killing off a character like, you know, Kendricks and Zeta, which both were brought back to life in Power Rangers history. but. It's somebody who has truly passed. So it's not just, oh, a favorite character of yours died, but, you know, the actor's still around. It was a tribute to the actor, the actress who had passed in a car crash. So, you know, it was definitely something that for any fan who grew up with these characters, watching them, you know, did bring a little tears because it's a wrap of that character, a wrap of a memento memorializing that actress. So it was like difficult to see that and watch because you know it she has passed. So I think it was very well played. Now after that we had Billy and Zach telling Min about her mom. Well Min finding out about her mom. Billy wanted to tell her Zach didn't. And then we had a one year time skip that I thought was really cool. I think I like that they did incorporate a time skip in there. Now, Trini was a single mom. There's no mention at all about a father. It was just Trini and Min. So, who knows if maybe the father passed, just walked out. I mean, that wasn't 
explained it all. No parental heritage, no father figure. And after the one-year time skip, we did see that Walter Jones, Zach Taylor, did move in with Min and start raising her after the loss of Trini. So I thought that was really cool to see. You know, this was definitely, there was definitely a heavy focus on, other than Min, because, I mean, they were introducing her, there was definitely a heavy focus on Zach and Billy, but especially Zach. Zach was definitely a heavy standout with it. I mean, Rocky, Cat, Zach, and Billy all did absolutely fantastic. You know, the four of them returning. I mean, Adam and Aisha. I'll go into more of them later, but they even did. It was cool seeing them back as well. But Zach was definitely a heavy one and got some nice character development I think he deserved. Because also, I mean, Zach had the lowest time on the show than any of them. He was only in because look at season two. Yes, he was in it for half the season. But for a majority of that half he was in, it was a suit actor and archive footage. It was not actually Walter Jones. So looking at it, he's had the least time on the show. So I feel as though he had kind of like, the least character development with it. And, you know, definitely, I mean, Adam is such an iconic character that Adam has been brought back as Mighty Morphin Black twice for three extra episodes. So, I mean, personally, as a kid, the first person I saw as Mighty Morphin Black was Adam Parr. So I always equated the powers myself with Adam and thought of him when I thought of Mighty Morphin Black. So, you know, I definitely think this was very good for the character of Zach Taylor. Walter Jones did a phenomenal job, and they definitely gave, you know, that character development that he was very much lacking, I felt, in Mighty Morphin. So I was very happy to see that. It was nice to have his character back and Billy. Now, the action sequences I really liked. A complaint I did have was, you know, a lot, majority of it, which I see why, you know, was character development, catching up with Billy and Zach, setting up Min. So, you know, I mean, we've seen Rocky and Cat sooner than we've seen the others. So there was a little more of a backseat. Plus, they weren't really in too much of a first section of it until... Robo Rita appeared again in the one year later, the one year memorial of Trini's passing. And we saw Robo Snizzard and Robo Minotaur. Now, Robo Snizzard was a very heavy part in it because he was responsible for the capturing Rangers. You know, obviously, as I stated previously, ASJ, Amy Joe Johnson, and JDF were not a part of it. So I did like the aspect of captured rangers being used to power up a time portal with their morphing grid energy because I think it was a very makeshift way of like, all right, taking them three out of the equation, Jason, Tommy, and, and uh, Kimberly, and bringing back Cat and Rocky, which I did very much like having them two back. Now, for those that maybe didn't catch it, in the fighting sequence before we saw Kimberly, Tommy, and Jason captured and turned into their uh, lightning collection figure selves to power the machine. For those that didn't notice, the fighting voices that you heard when they were all three in fight sequences. Now, Jason, there was not noises coming from. But for those that didn't notice, Kimberly and Tommy, when there was speaking, and, like, they were doing the, you know, the karate noises. I mean, I personally, I definitely heard it. I mean, you can't mistake those voices. It was the voices of Amy Jo Johnson and JDF. So, I mean, I'm going with because we know it was suit actors. But because they've done so many fighting sequences in the past, I'm going with it was potentially archive footage. Definitely they would have needed their approval with it. So, I mean, those... Those definitely sounded like JDF and Amy Joe Johnson. I mean, I've met JDF enough time. I had met him enough times that, yeah, I watched so much. I mean, I correct me if I'm wrong and you think differently, but I think those were their voices. And obviously, it would have been archive footage with it. They didn't do the ADR. They didn't go on scene. But I mean, hey, it was possible. And if it definitely was theirs, like I think, 
I think that's amazing that they at least did incorporate that to give that feel of them being there, of them too. Now, Captured Rangers Zach's Beck. We had that, and, you know, then we had Min was filled with revenge and wanted Robo Rita destroyed. And there was that big scene where she took out her anger on Billy, and, you know, it left it wondering. And then we saw that Billy was responsible for Robo Rita. He was trying to revive Zordon from the energy that spread throughout the galaxy during the Countdown to Destruction energy wave that Zordon did when his tube was shattered, which we saw his tube there. And instead of picking up Zordon's energy and reviving Zordon, he revived Rita Repulsa, a robo version. She took over her dark energy, took over the Alpha's body. So it could have been maybe Alpha 7 and this is Alpha 9. I don't know. You saw the dark energy latch onto an Alpha. So I'm figuring it was an Alpha 7 maybe, the last Alpha we had. and Or maybe an Alpha 8 prototype of it. I don't know. But this is Alpha 9. So, Billy was responsible for the creation of Robo Rita. But, you know, I mean, he had no way of knowing. And him and Min did have a forgiveness scene at the end of it. And I thought that was very heartfelt. I think the acting was absolutely fantastic in that. Now, we did have his creation. And we saw something wicked cool. I mean, the Bandora protocol, which was amazing to see, you know, Zach and Billy are in the command center with Alpha, which is literally underneath Cranston Technologies, which is wicked amazing. I mean, it definitely makes sense. Billy created his own company. Bandora Protocol was something that I thought was absolutely fantastic because, you know, it really links it all together that this is a Power Rangers legacy. The teams do communicate with each other. So Bandora Protocol, I mean, it was if Rita Repulsa ever was to return, that all teams would be contacted and prepared for battle. Like we saw Cat and Rocky be automatically transported to the command center when the Bandora protocol was activated. And Cat and Rocky acknowledge it, which Rocky is now a firefighter. He was mad that his lunch was interrupted, but he got over it quickly. You know, he had his uh, comedic attitude that we saw in Zeo, which I loved. And then Cat, we did get a mention of J.J. Oliver. Just where Tommy was. Yes, her and Tommy are married. If you didn't see Dimensions in Danger. So it was mentioned even though he wasn't present. And when she discovered he was captured. So we did have that scene. It's amazing that even with JDF not being a part of it. They did still take into account Dimensions in Danger. And J.J. Oliver. And all of that. And Kat's relationship with Tommy. Now, Bindora Protocol. You saw in the Bandora Protocol, the console, names of other Ranger places. You know, you had Terra Venture, which I figured more. I didn't talk about it in my Captured Ranger video that I released the other day. But I figured more, I mean, if it said Marinoid, because Terra Venture was destroyed. But they could be calling, Terra Venture was supposed to be the first city on the New World. So, I don't know. I mean, I think Marinoi would have made more sense on that because that's where the Lost Galaxy Rangers do reside. But we have Marinoi, Astro Megaship, which Forever Red, the Astro Megaship, was rebuilt after its destruction in Lost Galaxy, the uh, finale of it, Galaxy's End. So, we had their reefside Dino Thunder, where Tommy and Cat live. Well, they lived in Dimensions of Danger, I'm figuring they still do. And we had um, Turtle Cove, where the Wild Force Rangers are from. And we had Coral Harbor, where the Beast Morphers Rangers are from. Now, Bandora po- Protocol, Alpha is talking to, sends out a message to Rangers all over the world. Prepare, get to your battle stations, you know, prepare for battle. Because putties were attacking all over the world with trying to get the rangers to morph so Robo Snizzard and Robo Minotaur could sense them on their tracker to capture them. Now, you know, the special I know was only 55 minutes, and there was a lot to fit into it. You know, I know other than the Mighty Morphin Rangers, I didn't expect 
any other Rangers to make an appearance, even with the captured Ranger aspect of it. However, I would have liked if they could at least have given a couple minutes, a few minutes, like even if it was like two to four, and not even all the teams that had a Ranger captured from it. But I would have liked to see if we could have at least seen one of the Ranger teams, you know, suited up so they didn't have to bring back the actor, just have suit actors in it. But seeing them like having their morpher, whatever they used for a communicator at the time, whatever they heard Alpha through, whatever it was, responding to Alpha's message and then like facing the putties and being captured. You know, I mean, we had, I think a perfect one could have been two. Granted with it, especially with the Saban seasons, they filmed in California where now it's New Zealand. I mean, I still would have liked to potentially see the ability like if we had, let's for say, I mean, there's the three grid battle force rangers that were captured. I mean, have the suit actors in it, show them being captured, spend a couple minutes to that, try them trying to face off against Robo Minotaur and Snizzard. Or we had three Lost Galaxy Rangers, two in space. I mean, there were also two um, Dino Thunder. And we had Tanya from Power Rangers Zeo. She was the unidentified Yellow Ranger. But I also really would have liked to see Phantom because, I mean, he was... Last we knew, he was after Countdown to Destruction, I mean, I'm guessing Eltar. So it would have been interesting to maybe see with his. I think he was an interesting choice. I'd really like to know how they picked which Lightning Collection figures, I mean, they were going to use. I think that's extremely cool. But I did like that aspect. I saw a couple complaints on it, you know. But I think a majority of the complaints are we didn't see any of the other Rangers. Even if they were already morphed, so you don't have to bring back the actors and spend more money on it. See, hear them respond to the call and get captured. I think that would have been cool to add and would have maybe upped the rating on it and given less of a con because that was a con for me as well. But overall, you know, as I said, the last half, you know, the final battle with Rita, the captured ranger part of it, I think that was more on the rushed end. You know, we saw Min continuously trying to be a ranger but she was not worthy of being it the power coin didn't choose her because which i mean more we haven't had the power coin chooses the ranger type of thing it's like zordon chose the ranger the only time we really had like it chooses somebody is the quasar sabers that chose who their ranger was they had to be chosen and have a good heart and the energems because they focused on who the person was and their good intentions that they had to prove that they had hero qualities and were selfless. So I did like that they took things like that into account where that has been a type of thing with past Rangers, where Zoran was just, he chose these teenagers because they were teenagers with attitude and had hero-like qualities where they weren't specifically like show like chosen chosen by I mean the power coin itself like they didn't seek out that personal being so I did like that that was more something here where the power coin specifically it rejected her for a while and then chose her after Min feeling bad about how she treated Billy sacrificed followed in her mom's footsteps and essentially sacrificed her life to save Billy from Robo Rita once again. And I think it was fantastic that Billy got in. You know, we saw the power weapons, and this is, I believe, the first time Cat has ever used the power bow. And this is, I think, like the second or third time Rocky's used the power sword. Because after the transfer of powers in Season 2, I mean, it was very rare when they were used again. They didn't use them much after that. I mean, Adam... They each, I think, used their power weapons the second iteration of the team. Not counting Cat, I consider that third iteration of the team. I mean, they only used them like a couple times after the power transfer. So, Adam, we at least got his comeback in Always a Chance and Once a Ranger. And in Once a Ranger, we saw him use the power axe. So, so I think it was cool that we did see the power weapons used in that. I absolutely love that. Billy using the Power Lance to at first take down Robo Rita. And then how was the aspect of 
you know, when they saw the console with all 16 captured Rangers, I would have liked Rocky and Cat to have a moment about seeing Tanya because, I mean, they did, all three of them served on Zeo together. And Cat and, not only were Cat and Tanya best friends, but Catherine and Nikia in real life are best friends. So I definitely think, like, they should have spent at least a few seconds acknowledging that Tanya was captured. Because, I mean, that's Kat's best friend. I mean, of course she acknowledged Tommy. But, you know, Robo Minotaur, I mean, he got beaten pretty easily. Snizzard, they had him grow. And he was in the Megazord, which I think was extremely cool. We saw a new cockpit. And this Megazord was modeled after the, the Zord Ascension project was used as the concept, the base for it. So I think that was cool that Hasbro did take into account and use their toys for this as well. Now, for those wondering, the power morph for that they use, I am about 99% sure that looked to be Legacy. I mean, I have the Legacy Power Morpher, and it's got that metallic shine to it. I mean, that, in my opinion, definitely looked to be the Legacy Morpher. I mean, hey, unless they say otherwise, I definitely could be wrong. They could have used Lightning Collection, but I mean... I'm about pretty positive that was the Legacy Morpher they used. And oh, also, the new morphing sequence, I did really like that. Still, I think Adam's morphing sequence from Once a Ranger was much better. I still think that's the best Mighty Morphin morphing sequence we've had. But I do like the updated new and improved one. I think it's, I think it was wicked cool, the morphing energy, like, grasping around them i think that was extremely cool looking i think the cgi on that was absolutely not, was really nice so i did think the new morphing sequence was good that is a pro that i really liked so billy had put the power lance through rita we had that and then we had zach do the final shot taking her out she they stopped her from traveling to the past with the destruction of snizzard so i think that was cool that snizzard did you know they brought back two of these Mighty Morphin monsters that were early on in it, and they did play a big role, and I really enjoyed that. Now, last part of it, I'm going to say we had Adam and Aisha. Have to get to them still. I still haven't. So, I love Sirian was name dropped. They're using Billy's technology. So, in SPD, we had, they said, uh, Ethan, they still used Ethan's technology till. SPD's current days, but Billy's technology was used for the start of SPA, which became SPD. Now, they name drop Syrian. Doggy Kruger is from that planet. So, they talked about that. So, Doggy Kruger, he wasn't name dropped, but I mean, it's, it's likely that they're interacting with Kruger at this moment. And they talked about their teams in the rest of the galaxy. So Adam and Aisha, I mean, could it be a squad? Could it be a former team before a squad? Who knows? But I mean, I hope this opens the door. Since since SPA was given a focus during that, and I think it's absolutely fantastic that Adam, when Adam retired from Ranger duties, I mean, it makes sense that I'm going to say the second greatest Ranger of all time created what becomes spd in the future is joined by aisha i would like to see how he met up with aisha again i would have actually liked a little time to be taken to explore that and maybe give them a look which they're traveling through space they're off world so that is explained why they that is makeshift explain why you know they weren't suiting up because we already did have black and yellow rangers so I did absolutely think that was fantastic. That was a cool aspect. But we did see them in person at the end of it. And honestly, the last scene where they're talking about the, you know, the captured rangers, I really love because finally we had mentioned Aquatar. Now we had Adam and Aisha mentioning that they they took the captured rangers with them and were taking them to Aquatar. To heal on the planet. Now we have Aqu Aquatar has healing properties. Billy was there for a while getting healed of his rapid aging. So the Rangers were taken off screen. Now I would have liked if maybe they 
we saw suit actors come back and pop out of the figures like Lost Galaxy Red, you know, all of them after it. But I mean, so they didn't have to pay all those suit actors. I guess it was easier to just have them taken off screen. But we got an act. Mention of Aquatar in Sestria, Billy's former love interest that he stayed on Aquatar for. And they do say, Billy, Sestria has been mentioning you from Aquatar. You know, she'd really like to see you again. Now, Billy is in Cosmic Fury. He will be in it. We don't know for how many episodes. It's 10 episodes. Now, Billy not only named Aquatar. But Maranoi was also mentioned. Now, I'm a huge fan of Lost Galaxy. So, Maranoi, I mean, Cosmic Fury is taking place in outer space. Could we see Aquatar? Could we see Maranoi? It is very high possibilities. Billy is going to be with the Cosmic Fury team in some way, shape, or form. And we had name drops of Aquatar and Maranoi. And Billy talked about with Adam and Aisha how, you know, he... So Billy spent a long time traveling his space. Min talks about that, and we hear that many times. And he talked about, you know, how he still had to do some stuff with Cranston Technologies, but he'd go to Aquatar and Maranoi. They'd do all this traveling in space at some point. Like, he'd maybe rejoin. I mean, I'd say maybe rejoin Adam, join Adam Aisha, maybe he traveled with them. But, I mean, he's going to be with the Cosmic Fury team who knows how long. Maybe they'll run into him on Aquatar or Maranoi. I absolutely cannot wait even more now until Cosmic Fury comes out because that's also going to be... I mean, we have all this potential now. It's extremely exciting. You know, I definitely give it the special at least an 8. Maybe 8.5. I personally very much enjoyed it. Do I think there were some cons to it? Yeah, I mean, I spoke about what I had what I had for cons, you know. I think with all the Tommy mentions we got, it would have because with Cat, it would have been good to have JDF. You know, I think because we've seen Cat and Rocky more recently, they were a little bit of a backseat to Min, Zach, and Billy. But I mean, still, I think it was fantastic that they even returned. And, you know, I love their characters. I always do. It was excellent seeing them suit up. Cat had the pterodactyl coin for the first time. The uh, prototype coins that they made, that Billy developed. I mean, Billy's genius. Radbug, too. I mean, overall, I absolutely love the special. So, yeah, I'm extremely happy with it. I hope Hasbro realizes this is a direction that they should keep going in. You know, if they're able to get other complete teams back, I hope that is something they visit and they continue doing. I mean, now we got SPA. Hey, SPD, that should be revisited. I mean, we got the Boom Studio Comics to work with as well. All that, and Greg Aronowitz, is said he would love to revisit SPD and do a sequel to that. So, you know, I mean, that's something that I hopefully would love to see potentially in the future. And I mean, I think they could get the SPD actors. I think they could get like uh, Kruger, Sky, Bridge, Z, um, Sid. I think they could potentially get them to return. I mean, Jack retired, but maybe a uh, behind the scenes role still. You don't see him suit up. But, I mean, it's something I would absolutely love to see. I hope we see more of Min in the future. I did really enjoy her character. I mean, who knows what the future holds. Hopefully, they revisit stuff like this. I would absolutely love to see it. But, that's all for this video. I've talked a lot about it. I've given all my thoughts on it, what I thought. I mean, let me know in the comments below what you thought of this special. This is probably... This is like the longest video I've made in a while, but I mean, it was a 55 minute special, a lot to talk about, a lot I loved, a couple things I didn't, I wasn't really happy with, but I mean, I expected it to be either like extremely good or like a flop. And you know, they kept that 1993 old original Power Rangers like silliness, cheesiness. 
and added like more mature tone as well with it, doing it as a tribute. And I mean, the song of Amy Jo Johnson with flashbacks in the beginning was absolutely fantastic to see. I mean, her singing is absolutely excellent. And, you know, the tribute thing of them, I think they handled it very well. And who knows what the future holds for Power Rangers. I just can't wait for Cosmic Fury now. So that's all for this video. Make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and ring that bell for notifications. Also, be sure in the description below to follow us on Instagram and Twitter for all channel news and updates. And check out my recent video doing a recap of the fan stream from this past Monday. Be sure to check that out. Look at all the toy news. 1 p.m. today, Eastern Standard Time, we have the next three remasters going on. I'll be getting those pre-orders in personally. Be sure to get that, especially green and pink. I mean, green, we got a removable shield. They did fixing updates on it. Green candle, pink. That Amy Jo Johnson head sculpt is next level excellent. Have to add that to my collection. Blue and yellow are on the way. I'll have reviews up on those, so tune in for those videos. Keep an eye out. And next video is video 100. I am super excited to be adding that into the channel, so tune in for that. I have something ex exceptionally planned for that. Might be a little delayed because I have to wait for new parts on what I got in. They A couple parts of the special thing I'm not going to give hints to. It uh broken, so I have to new have new parts commissioned. So it might be a little delayed until I get them in. So, but be sure to tune into that when I do get on the channel. I will keep it updated. Now that's all for this video, but I'll see you soon with more Power Rangers Super Sentai and Tokusatsu content. So be sure to tune in, and again, let me know what you thought of the special and. Gotta end it with, since it's once and always, may the power protect you. And be sure to get some 30th anniversary fan merch. They got it on Amazon. Hasbro Pulse put some up. I know I picked that up. It's got all the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers on it, except white, you know, 30th anniversary. So get some 30th anniversary fan merch. And see you soon.